Let's go. All right, everyone. We are back on the Sandcast, and we have a really fun episode today. We got Matt Furbringer in the house. How are we doing, Furbs? What's up, boys? Furbs. Been, it's good uh, to have you over. Been I'm looking forward to this one. I'm We're all within like here. a couple blocks of each other now. It's, it's funny if you just like go down the strand. It's like, all right, we got try on. You're now 19th ish, and now you got pop up to 28th. Yeah, you just got to cover. It, it's basically like that for the whole beach volleyball community, right? We're all just kind of scattered as close as we can get to the beach. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It uh, it's been an interesting year, that's for sure. Yeah, um, as we were talking, especially about. for like any players or coaches, and obviously. You're a coach, and I've seen you out at the beach a couple times yeah. uh, with your boy Mateo. Yeah, um, who he's really good. Thanks. By the way, <laughs> he's, he's, he's well. He's born at the volleyball, so he's he's played a long time, so he's yeah. good. Yeah, he has yeah. fun. What uh, what are you doing at the moment? Or I guess what are you allowed to do at the moment as a coach um, at Long Beach uh, and with still with Rockstar, right? Yeah. So um, first, thanks for having me, boys. This is yeah. this is fun. Sure. Um, connect with all you guys uh right now long beach we just had our first week of practice and okay. it was literally in a year almost a year to the date from the last time we saw our girls so up to that point we had just been zooming uh with our girls two to three times a week um you know we learned a lot about how to build a culture over zoom so, um, <laughs> so <laughs> we did a lot of great stuff actually like i think in the long run it will be a really good thing for us i mean but it's very it was very frustrating the moment not just to be able to get our girls on campus and uh this year we had 10 freshmen and Jeez. our first time seeing them was on monday wow in the entire year besides on a zoom that's crazy <laughs> so you want to talk about a little bit crazy yeah, yeah really crazy so i mean we've hit a lot of bumps but um i think we all have and um We've learned a lot, which has been, I think, kind of fun and learn all the lessons we've learned. And um, But now we're back in the gym and this week was, I mean, it was like the focus was just, I mean, everyone oh, I was so tuned in, you know, like all the players, coaches, just locked in. So it was fun. We get them for about five weeks and then before we get into uh, double days in August. Okay. It's exciting yeah. to be back. Yeah, no, it's, oh, it's yeah. super fun. And, and the, the crazy part is in the meantime, I was coaching Rockstar three days a week, going yeah. to tournaments, you know, doing all this stuff and, uh, and then other colleges are going and we're not. And what happened with Long Beach is um, our school was fighting so hard to get us out there, but um, the city of Long Beach was being really strict. So the city of Long Beach has their own health department and they were just being super cautious. And, mm. you know, I mean, I'm glad we were in one of those areas that was being cautious versus putting the kids at risk and putting them out there. Right. Um, so we have a good system now. We test pretty much every day. We have to do all the stuff to go in, so it feels good. But we're in the pyramid. We have our TerraFlex court down. Nice. It's just us and the guys, so we have like a lot of. I know we just get. It's pretty focused, so it's good. Yeah, yeah. I practiced oh, yeah. with uh, Casey and Chase the other day, and, and Mike Campbell's obviously yeah. working with them. And yeah. He's like, all right, boys, I got to run. Got my third COVID test this week that I got to go to. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. They're not cutting any corners of COVID this year. The no. No, <laughs> and you're vaccinated too, right? And I'm, I'm vaccinated, so again, Mike had it. I'm oh, sorry, Mike. If you didn't know that. No. <laughs> and he's he's having to get tested, you know. So yeah. it's but listen, it's it's for the safety of others. Like, yeah, I'm for it. You know, totally. I'm not. You know, I didn't really care if I got vaccinated or not, but right. if it's going to help other people and going to help me do it, then I'm all in. Yeah. yeah. And you got what? One, I got you got one shot. I got one shots? shot yesterday. Okay. Hoping to get my next one before Cancun, but yeah, I'm I'm in the same boat. I'm not all that. I mean, I had pre-existing health stuff, so it's a little, little scarier. That's why I got yeah. to get my vaccine. Yeah. But um, at the end of the day, it's like peace of mind for like other people around me. Like totally. that makes it totally worth it for me. Yeah. And yeah. so apparently, the second shot, you feel people are feeling kind of sick. Did you get sick? On so the one? my mother-in-law, who lives with us, my wife, myself, my parents, none of us had anything on a second shot. Huh. Really? So. Uh, we did have one of our coaches, Sabrina Hernandez. She felt something on the second shot. Okay. So, yeah, uh, I think it's hit or miss. Yeah, it's hit or miss. So, yeah, I, I don't know. Because apparently your <laughs> your immune system after the first shot it can recognize it quicker, right? So then it'll bring the fever on whatever your okay. body needs to do to beat it. Like it'll bring it on right away. But I guess some people just science. Science <laughs> beats me. I don't know. <laughs> We play volleyball, don't we? But I'm stoked because, <laughs> dude, this bubble, there's one week in COVID. I heard 15 people total, like, including after the event, in, got COVID in Doha. at one point or another. Yeah. I heard that so too. So if we have three weeks in a row of a bubble, 
like it's going to be like survival like yeah. screw well, playing volleyball it, just don't get covid yeah, and you're going to be in the event you're going to be like sliding up the seating yeah. most likely and that's what um i that i was talking to someone about it um because i was like part of me is like pretty glad that i had it because it's, mm-hmm. it's supposed to be basically like a natural vaccine right. where you got the antibodies because like now when i test i'm i'm not nervous at all right um but yeah because i was talking to pedlo and he said 12 or 15 i don't know what the number's up yeah, to I don't know after exactly. doha and they were tight in Doha. Like you were getting tested all the time. Couldn't get into the bubble without a negative test. Couldn't leave without a negative test. So our poor trainer, Christian Hartford, still in Doha. So brutal. Because <laughs> he sitting tested. in his hotel room for ten to fourteen days. Yeah. And so <laughs> what Doha. I'm wondering, I'm wondering what they're going to do in Cancun um, if you test positive. Because at the same time, like you can't keep them in the bubble, but you also can't leave the bubble. Right. Right. <laughs> so what do you do with them? I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to all be going. So I'm also coaching the um, U.S. men's team. So I'll be in Tokyo with them. And uh-huh. we're going okay. to, we're going to uh, a bubble in Italy for world. Well, for VNL now, it used to be the World League. Right. Okay. So we're going to be there from the 25th until of May to the 27th of June. Okay. In all a exciting. bubble. Yeah. And so the same thing, you know, it's like if you get it when you're there, you know, we, we're talking about it even to the guys like, hey, I know you're coming home from overseas. You want to see people. But like if you get it. A week or two weeks leading up to this you're not going and if you're not going on this trip they're not letting people in late yeah, yeah. and exactly. if you're not going on this trip you're not going to the olympics yeah because you won't train that's basically oh, our that's training insane. going up yeah. right so it's like it's nerve-wracking right oh, yeah. like i mean gosh these people put so much work in and it could come down to some some virus it's yeah just, it's, totally yeah. luck of the draw yeah you walked by the wrong person yeah yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly. brutal yeah. That's a long time in a bubble, though. From May, you said May second to June. No, no, May May twenty second. Okay. Yeah, we'll leave on the twenty second, I think, and then yeah, no, it's gonna be it. It will be it will be great for us because we've been, all been apart for so long. Right. So in a way, it'll be really good, and they're letting people bring families. Okay. They can bring their families, That's cool. so guys with young kids can bring their kids yeah. and be in the bubble the whole time. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, it's hard for me because I'll be away from my family the whole time. But I think for our team, if we have, we have any chance of winning gold that we we need these. We need mm-hmm. these five, six weeks yeah. together. And we're not, I don't follow the indoor stuff a whole lot. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you still keep up with it, but how, to. how is the indoor team doing? Or how, how were we looking before shit hit the fan? Yeah, really good. I mean, I actually, so I was with them in 2016 and then I left to, to work at Long Beach with Joy. Okay. Um, and so I haven't been with them. And then right before, I think maybe like in January of 2020, they asked me to come back and take my old role. And cool. I said, sure, I'll do it. And then <laughs> it hit. So I haven't been really with the team in a while, man. I've been okay. on Zooms with them and done stuff, um, but um, watching a ton of video right now, trying to catch up. Uh, and I mean, we're just solid everywhere. Yeah. But we need to be healthy, and we need to be, um, we need to get some time together, like all the other teams right. do, right? Yeah. So it's it's be interesting, just who's healthy, right. who's ready. Um, but I'm I'm excited. It's a really good group of uh, of, of guys, really okay. good group. Yeah. And I believe today they announced that. Uh, there's officially no foreign fans allowed at the Olympics, that. which we kind of already knew. Yeah, that's a Karch said that that's probably yeah. what they were going to do, which is pretty cool that they said no foreign fans, which means they're still leaving the door open to potentially Japanese fans. Japanese which fans, cool I think, can go there. because the numbers are really great in Japan. Yeah, they have it under control, so yeah. they figure if they just. Did you see? I was looking at that today. Did you see if they're letting family go? Are those considered fans, or are they not letting family? Like no one. I didn't think that for family was included in that, but I could be wrong. Okay. Yeah. Now yeah, we'll see. That's yeah. brutal. I got my press pass though. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Try to sneak my way in every side door possible. <laughs> nice. <Perfect. Yeah. laughs> Shoot, yeah. man. Last Olympics, I got to go see. So for those of you guys that don't know, I used to play with Nick Lucena, mm-hmm. and uh, when I was in Rio, I got to go to their fifth place match. And to get into the semifinal, quarterfinal yeah. match since the fifth class against uh, Bruno and Ali San. And um, we, it was random because we had everything prepped for our next game. We didn't have a game that day. We were prepped, um, ready to go. So, like, we took the whole staff. Uh, we went. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And we walk in, and it's a beautiful day. Like, just sunny afternoon, like Rio, just insane. And uh, we walk in. I go down. I, I think to get a drink, I go down and all of a sudden I'm seeing like wind, like the sand starting to blow, like, Mm -hmm. you know, and I'm like, dude, it's getting kind of windy, huh? By the time like I go back up, back into the stadium, because it takes a little while, 
it is just a circular wind whipping through the stadium and yeah. now it's not even like volleyball anymore right it's just yeah. like wind ball and right. here was like this i think the two best teams going sure. into the last you know last olympics um battling in this wind ball and it just came down to who started on that good side in that yeah. third set you know and it was just like oh man like this is just i mean it could have been so, i mean ali son and phil probably two of the best big game big guys mm -hmm. like when it matters they're yeah. good yeah and um yeah, it was a bummer. Yeah. It was a bummer to and see that. And it was yeah. talking about like a virus or a wind. Totally. Carrie right. Walsh talks about it raining when she woke up for a gold medal match in China and how she, like, she had to like totally reset because she, her her vision of it had always been right. like a sunny day. Yeah. Interesting. So, yeah. It's it's, really interesting. Yeah, it's crazy. Huh. Yeah. It's such a bummer that one, that they played in the wind, but two, that they played in the quarterfinals. When you're looking at, yeah, I mean, I think far and away the two best teams in the world at that time. Yeah, that was Bruno's fault. I, I think, feel like, right? I feel like it'd be Anderson yeah, Christian right. playing the Russians in the quarterfinals. Yeah. In Tokyo, it'd be like, this is a bummer. Yeah. They just shouldn't play that early. <laughs> yeah. No. That was, uh, I, I felt like whoever won that match was going to potentially win that gold. Yeah, especially yeah. the way the rest of the bracket had kind yeah. of shaped up. But yeah. it's interesting. Lupo made it an interesting gold medal match, though. I mean, they were winning both sets, like, to like the eighteen seventeen switch, and then things kind of fell apart. Are they still playing well, Nikolai and Lupo? They're still playing well. Yeah. I mean, we haven't played in a year, but. <laughs> 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 uh, I mean, yeah, they're still they're still thought of as you know they can win any particular yeah. event. I, I feel like they don't. They're just not consistent because they're both so good. Like the talent is just there, yeah. absolutely yeah. every match. But it's like, are they going to show up? I remember, to win tournaments. I remember in Vegas, um, I was watching them play the Qatari guys. And I was sitting there watching it with Jeff Alzina. Mm -hmm. And Z was like, I don't know how these guys ever lose a match. Right. Like, you'll see them play like that. Because I think Nikolai is like he's one of monster. the biggest blocks. He's yeah. monster, and he yeah. sets like absolute yep. beautiful sauce. He yep. goes on two. And, yeah. yep. and then you get Lupo, who's just like Mr. Consistency. But then you watch him. I watched them play in the European Champs. And they lost to um, Estonia, maybe. And the Estonian guys are pretty good, but it's not right, a yeah. team you'd expect Nikolai and Lupo to lose to. Right. So then it set them up to play the Germans for 25th. Mm. They beat the Germans, go all the way to the semifinals. So you get like Nikolai and Lupo can lose to Estonia one day, beat Germany the next, and go all the way to the semifinals and give Anders and Christian a three setter in the semis. It's right. Like, yeah. Who are, <laughs> you never yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure uh, Lupo's super consistent. You know, he's okay. like. He's got the ability to be like I think he's like he's got all the shots and all. I mean, we put I, when I was playing, he was coming in and he had everything. Yeah, just all the game you possibly need. But yeah. I don't know if he's always like locked in. When yeah, I, when yeah I've exactly. Seen. It's yeah. it's more of like a is he locked in? Yeah, question. And when well. he is, it's you're right because it's just yeah he's got all the tempos. Yeah, trying like, to block yeah. against him is a nightmare when he's on. Yeah, short deep fast low high like, yeah uh, and he snappy, runs that just like little snaps. mini set out of the middle uh -huh. it's just it just gives him so much court on both sides oh, yeah. and i love that offense yeah, yeah. definitely okay. wasn't my offense you uh <laughs> or what i haven't seen you play too much i found a couple old youtube videos All and right. i think one of my favorites is your manhattan beach run with casey yeah and <laughs> when you played phil and rosie and you guys just i was like i don't know how anybody can possibly side out on you two nothing they did worked so i don't know um like what kind of player would you say that that you were i mean you obviously were fantastic at stanford um, that was the last match of your beach. career right that was my last match of my career yeah. an epic way to go <laughs> out man. pretty good <laughs> <laughs> i almost got uh persuaded to come back by um by Taylor to come back okay. and play a match in Austin. Oh, nice. Um, and it was a couple years later, but I'd, I'd planned this whole party down in Mexico for all my friends to get together. And uh -huh. I was like, no. And then I was so happy I didn't go. Well, he ended up getting second. With uh, Tim Ballmer. With Tim Ballmer. Yeah. And he's like, I could have carried you. And I was like, I have a bike, <laughs> I could have carried Except when I played Manhattan, it was like nice, easy weather. I'm Because I wasn't in shape, right? And when I'm playing, mm -hmm. when, you know, and... He, I just heard about Austin being like 90 degrees hot. I'm like, would have, oh, been, yeah. would have been miserable for yeah. me. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, last match. Um, I think Casey and I were, uh, we were emotional players. And I think we, we and Nick and I as well. And I, I think we were, we were a little bit hot and cold too. Yeah. Mm. You know, I don't, wouldn't say we were the most consistent team, but I think when we, when our backs were against the wall, we were really good. Yeah. We were good in big tournaments. We were good in country quotas. 
Um, Casey and I started off not being good in finals, but we were good, but we just couldn't win you one for a while. Them. And then we started like towards the end of our career, we started winning almost every one we, we, we got to. Um, so, I, you know, both my partners used to always say, like, you're better on center court, you know, like you do mm. better when, yeah. you're, when you're going. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, I just, I think I was a uh, hard worker, worked really hard. I studied the game a lot. I picked up the game late, so I yeah. kind of always felt like I was a little behind on some things. So I, I worked really hard. I uh, came in with a whole generation of big guys that were kind of similar to me. Yeah. Where it was like Jake kind of picked it up late. I picked it up late. Nygaard came on the beach a little bit before. He kind of like, oh, well, he picked it up early, but he's from Wisconsin. He wasn't really on the beach game early. Yeah. Um, there was Sean Scott from Hawaii. There was, uh, we all kind of, Sean came in a little bit before us, but I feel like a bunch of us came in at the same time and it was cool just to see how much better we all got. And um, I'm missing other, there was like a bunch of other guys that kind of came in at that time with me, but it was just like, I'm seven years of my career and it's like, dude, I'm way better than I was when I was, you know, first coming on. And when I first came in on, I was like 28 because right. I played indoor and then I played professionally indoor. And I was playing right. in the summer, I was playing tournaments, okay. but not year round. Um, and so like at 34, 35, I feel like I was way better than I was when I was younger. Give me hope, um, Ferbs. Yeah, <laughs> dude, you just get better on. I mean, look at Jake. Yeah, you know I mean, honestly, and 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 for me, my last two years. I mean, my last year uh, going for London, I, I was, I thought I played really, really well. We were top four in the top five in the world. Just so crazy. The only reason we, we lost out is is Jake and Rosie were number one that year. Yeah. yeah. And in 2011, like we were working with Scott Davenport, and he's like, if you guys finish this high, like you guys are in based on like the finishes, and we like demolished yeah we were way better finishes than we were supposed to get but then jake and rosie just went like they went Berserk. just the one three tournaments in a row yeah you know and they went through the roof and it came down to uh last tournament we were in rome we were in the quarterfinals and i'll never forget this so rome's this awesome freaking venue yeah. it's like yeah. you got statues all around you and it's just it's insane and uh i have a really good italian friend that i played with overseas um and he comes down and he's crying. And I'm like, fuck, man. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, so basically, we're in the quarterfinals, so are Jake and Rosie. Yeah. If Jake and Rosie win their quarterfinal match, then they're in. Nothing we can do. If they lose, if we win the tournament, we're in. Okay. Right. Right. And so um, we're getting ready to play, literally warming up. And he comes down and he's like, he's like, he's like crying. He's such a good guy. And we're like, and he's like, you don't even believe it. So they were playing, uh, they were playing Latvia. Yeah. And uh, they were playing um, the Lion King. And uh, the Lion King in the third set was up like 9-5. I, I don't know if this is the right score. Jake, if you hear this, you can tell me exactly what happened. <laughs> I don't like you. Uh, so, uh, oh, yeah. So, you don't need that. <laughs> so uh, whatever, um, Latvia hits a ball that either one of them hits the ball that there's a touch or no touch but it's yeah. in Latvia it's 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 from what my friend said it was a pretty obvious call that it was like Latvia got a touch in the ball yeah they call the ball out they don't call a touch so instead of being 10-5 it goes to 9-6 and then they argue so much that they get a red card and it goes to 9-7 oh man and they end up losing like 16-14 and, and they win the match happened? and they go and so uh oh. So yeah, it was it was just like brutal. It was a killer. We ended up winning. So then we ended up winning our quarterfinal match, um, which I don't know how That's we did it. We were, yeah, we were we were balling <laughs> like we were like just lost it, and then we won. And then there was a couple teams that were on the border, right, of getting in, and we were playing a Swiss team that if they beat us. They were probably getting in. Yeah. So we had people calling us like, "Dude, would you guys lose to them on purpose?" And we're mm -hmm. like, "No, we're not going to lose to them right. on purpose." Yeah. Like, fuck that. Like, you got to earn it. Yep. And we got beat like 21-10, 21-12. Like, <laughs> a team that we like almost always beat. And I'm yeah. like, nah, everyone's going to think. We got paid to lose. Like, right. We just had nothing. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? It was like, we won it. And it was just like, I mean, it literally was. Oh, actually, no. We lost No, we lost in the semifinals to uh, Emmanuel and Alison. Okay. Um, we lost them in the semifinals. Who then they ended up losing to Jake and Rosie. Jake and Rosie ended up winning that tournament. Mm -hmm. And then I, we played them for a third place match. And okay. so that bronze medal match was going to get them okay, like got it. a little bit more. And yeah. you know, if, I mean, I've won some bronze medal matches. It's it's fun. Like I yeah. won, we won one in the Olympics with the guys. Like it, it is, you're up for it. But this one, we just 
didn't happen. I don't know. We, we, we literally like, no, we're going to play hard. We're going to yeah. do it. We just got, we, we got smashed. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that, boys. <laughs> <laughs> they went to the Olympics. They yeah. earned it. They yeah. beat us. It's so crazy, though. I was looking at that. I mean, you guys were the fifth ranked team in the world. And yeah. You and then and you didn't qualify. So where was uh, Phil and Todd in this? They were like second or third. So the top two Americans are one, two. Oh no, because I think Phil and Rose, or uh, Rosie and Jake were number one that year in the ranking, but they were still in Olympic, oh, Olympic. ranking. They weren't as high. Oh, got it, got it. They okay. weren't as high Olympic ranking. They were like four, and I think there was like th- I think it was us Germans, and Phil. So all the Americans and German and then like three Brazilian teams all were kind of like okay. in that top, uh, that top number. But the crazy part is then you go to, so our last tournament for the Olympics was Klagenfurt. Okay. And you know, you always have this big thing about the Olympics and what it is. And, and yeah. literally all the guys, all the teams were just getting on the road, packing their bags and they were going to London and we were going home. Mm. And it was this really weird feeling to kind of yeah. put back to home. Like, wait, like all these guys that we play with and, most of them we don't lose to, and yeah. they're packing their bags and going to London, and I'm packing my bags home. Like, yep. what the fuck? Like, <laughs> why is this? You know, it yeah, was kind of exactly. like a sad member to seeing guys pack. Just, you know, it was just like nothing. Like, oh yeah, we're gonna go to the next tour stop, and I'm like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. brutal, brutal, dude, it's brutal. That's kind of I mean, how um, the Brazilian women are. Right oh, now. So and men, yeah, yeah. I mean, Brazilian women have Rebecca and Anna, which I think are two. And then Agatha Duda, I think, were three. And then Maria and Carol were five. Yeah. But Brazil's already picked. Yeah. So their the qualification's done. So Maria and Carol uh, split up because they, they have no hope left. So I think uh, Carol's playing with Barbara. Um, right. They played their first tournament uh, in Doha. But it's crazy. I was like, that's the fifth-ranked team. And then um, It's so gnarly. I mean, Barbara Fernanda were 11. And they broke up, too, because... Like, geez, you had two teams in the top 15 in the world that aren't going to Tokyo. <laughs> yeah. I hate that that's our sport. That yeah. that's our pinnacle of yeah. our sport is is relying on the world tour and like the Olympics, not like the NBA or something where like it doesn't matter if all your top teams are European that year. Right. Like the best teams in the world are playing here. Yeah. So we're gonna go put them on display. Yeah. I mean, but, it, I mean, it is what it is, I guess. Hayden and I qualified over a bunch of teams as oh, well. Yeah, for sure. They're I mean, at the Olympics. Probably pretty similar position to Ferbs, right? Yeah. I mean, and Hayden finished. We were like, top like five-ish. maybe like no, well we were Olympic ranking. We were like twelve or thirteen, so okay. I think like three or four teams behind us. Yeah, it would be in. like you if if you guys were to go this year, it'd be similar. I'm right? in the same situation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but you, I mean, you can. I mean, it's it's crazy too because I look back at like some of the stuff and it's just, you know, I mean, I wasn't young when this was going on either. I mean, I yeah. was, but just some opportunities missed and just some like I, I look back to some lack of preparation a little bit and the game was changing a lot when I when I was there you know we were all the blocking moves and stuff you guys do like we were inventing that like right. we didn't really have turns for like I, I called the what we used to call the pinky it was like a show angle dive line uh-huh. we called that the witty and uh-huh. it was like because Mike Whitmarsh rest in peace Mike Whitmarsh is the one that started it but every coach was telling you like no you don't want to do that you always want to be outside and work your way in the court you know yeah, so no. it was like okay, wait, wait, can we do this? Yeah. And it was like, interesting. it wasn't really many blockers. Like it was like Whitmarsh before. It was like, just like blocker, blocker. Right. You know what I mean? Whereas like you guys had the whole generation ahead to kind of learn from. And it was, we were transitioning from the big court to the little court and kind of starting to get coaches, but we didn't really pay for them to travel. And video was tough. So you didn't right. watch a ton of video. Yeah. Like we used to beg you at USA Volleyball the video, but then yeah. they really wouldn't get it. And then we didn't really get supported from USA Volleyball. Then mm-hmm. like halfway between, we started getting supported by USA Volleyball. So it was a transitional, I think a transitional time. And um, so I don't know, like there's always, I mean, of course you finish and you look back at things, you think, oh my God, like just a few things. Cause it right. came down to a couple points, right? Yeah. Came Dude. down to a couple matches that we shouldn't have lost. Not in the end when we were like fully in, but like two years in advance, right? 2011 summer. Three more good finishes that summer, which yeah. you easily could have had, and that's where we are. Yeah. So I think that's like the lessons I learned is just like you know you just you, the best guys I think are just what what made Emmanuel so great was he just was like he was such a pro. He had four coaches. He was never going out. He was practicing before yeah. every, he had a routine. He was just like I mean he was a freak. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But more than that, man, he was a pro. Yeah. Yeah. Like Emmanuel was a pro. 
and it's and like so, you just so he was so consistent you have to earn yourself 10 extra points in a season like i always say that give me five in one season give me five points that i get to scatter wherever i want yeah and i can fully flip my season or like you know yeah. i would have been an olympian kind of thing like that yeah. close i'd be on the pier one point i'd be you know there's so many th- big things that could have happened if i could just like throw five yeah. points out there and i feel like those are the like the professionalism things where you, yeah. you get those five points i mean you can always look at it too like you wouldn't have gotten those opportunities if you hadn't done what you had done to get there right it's always going to be grass totally. is greener right but yeah it is crazy how much how yeah we, we, used, to play, we used to we used to battle casey and i and then nick and i used to battle this team numero Schul, yep. and they were a dutch team and so Numenor, good dude. legends I mean, so good, and like we became really good friends with them. Casey and I had a match with them in Czech Republic that was like, I don't know, like 22 20, third set, like just insane. And, and we just like bonded with them, so we'd hang out with them a lot. And but they would always be watching video of us before every match, watch everything, and be like, dude, how many times have we played you guys? Like, yeah. seriously, watching more video, and now I'm like, why weren't we watching video of them? Like, right. we kept losing, but we beat them, but more often than not, they were beating us by like two or three points, yeah. you know, but we just. We knew their game though, but it's just, I think that, like you said, it's that, that game plan is just, I think allows you to just, when you're not on your game, you know, and I think when Casey didn't want our game, we were tough, man. We were really tough For to sure. be. Yeah. Casey on defense and Nick on defense were as good as you possibly can be. Yeah. You know, like uh, just so locked in. Um, they could transition, but uh, Nick was so explosive in transition. Casey was so creative in transition. Um, but when we weren't locked in, there was a frustration that would get over us and I think overcome us sometimes. Yeah. Like if we weren't, cause like you said, like yeah. how do you put a ball down? That's how we could be sometimes, but other yeah. times offense is just good. Yeah. And deep sand, we were always good because guys could you know, would lose some angles and mm-hmm. they could line them up. And sometimes we play some big team on like shallow sand and they would just be bombing and yeah. there becomes this frustration. And, and uh, I think the best teams that are always there, it's just like, more of a confidence that they're going to get that one block or that one dig. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. like when it was Lambo and Karch and then it was Phil and Todd, it was just like 19 all a lot. But if we were 19 all, we were a little bit frustrated with a team we thought we should win. Right. Right. right? We weren't frustrated when we were playing, you know, Try and John Hyden at 19 all. We were like, fuck, this is a great game. Right. Yeah. yeah. But when we were playing a team that we were ranked better than, there was a little frustration there and then you maybe get dinged. And right. that ding catches up to you, right? Yeah. Like we were good in the losers, but those dings catch up to you. Oh, yeah. So it is, it's funny how like at the end of the game, it seems to come down to who in their own mind believes that like they should win. Right. Yeah. Like, you, you know, that feeling at the end where you're like, time for me to end this. Yeah. And then there's also this feeling of, okay, you know, it's Phil Dahlhauser. Like, here we go. Let's see if we can, <laughs> let's see what we can do here. Yeah. But like, that's not what, that's not the feeling you want at the end of the game. And right. you know that Phil Dahlhauser, usually because of his experience and like what has happened throughout his career, he's got this like, I'm going to finish it again. Yeah. <laughs> but that's probably why it has ha- happens that way. Granted, he's hitting two feet over you. But, <laughs> but, but like, that's something I feel like I've tried to build. Like, no, I'm like, this is just a mental battle right now. Yeah. Like, if I actually buy into that thought that Phil, it's, it's up to Phil to win this, then he, I'm going to lose. Which how, kind of how it is how it was when I was younger. Yeah. But now it's like, whatever you think, you're right. So yeah. don't think that wrong thing. I'm working on it at least. Yeah. But I well, really believe you, that that's how it goes. When you and Trev won the Porsche Cup, mm-hmm. was that in three or did you It was win in that three. Too? Yeah. Okay. I think it's rare to beat Phil in a third set. I mean, I think going into Beijing, yeah. like him and Todd were from 06 to 08, they did not lose one three set match. Which is insane. And oh, then in crazy. Beijing, I think they had a couple three setters. I think, uh, I don't know if you ever played the Lasigas. Yeah. But I think the Lasigas took them to three first round of elimination and they were up like 7 1 in the third. Because one of them yeah. was just Yahtzee and serves. Yeah, the and last Todd was like, yeah. well, if you keep serving like that, we're going to lose. And then Phil got a block and they freaked out. Mm-hmm. And then from there, like, gold medal run. Right. But I think to win a third set on Phil, <laughs> it's an accomplishment. And I think it comes down to that confidence. I think people collapse because of his presence. Yeah. Because who he is and what he's done and how big he is. Well, and but, he like, puts, but he puts pressure on you to be perfect. Like, right. He yep. doesn't give you those outs, right? Like some right. blockers give you, if you're visual, you see. But on those days when he's big, it's that 
yeah. you know, for, for me, it was that, well, I guess, his left hand that In takes the a ball that you don't think, yeah. you hit it and you're like, <laughs> he's, blocking, he's blocking line on you, but then yeah. he presses into yeah. like a and giant seam. Yeah. And, but he's still like fully squared up on your line. Yeah. And, no, we, it's insane. Yeah. And he You're has like, this wow. extra level because he presses so low and early, but then you hit a high line and all of a sudden his hand's at 12 feet and you're like, you were just like here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think people have more. Like we've, I mean, I, God, I lost him so many times in a row. It's crazy. <laughs> but then I beat him like four in a row, yeah. including a three set win. There you go. Yeah. In Manhattan Open Finals. And I don't, I don't know. I think just little guys got a little bit more used to him. Yeah. You know, just how to kind of, we, we used to call it the fill set and I would set both, both the guys just a little bit lower and off the net Yeah. and then just chop it at that line a little bit on him and try to get him to have to step over. So he can't take so much cross court and yeah. block line at the same time. Yeah. You know, so it's just a matter of, you know, and you just have to be on your game. Like he just, he's just so consistent. He just yeah. doesn't give you that room. But like, I feel like the fact that you, got to a third set means that anyone can win this set. Right? Yeah. So that's why I think it comes down to that mental mm -hmm. thing where who believes they can finish it. Yeah. Right. Oh, hundred. Cause I mean, he, he for sure has the advantage, but you've proven that that advantage is nullified because you're in the third set. Yeah. You both won one. So at that point it's like, yeah. Cause I remember you, you can't buy like a similar it. feeling when it was the qualifier for the Norseka like championships mm -hmm. two years ago mm -hmm. when me and Kyle beat Jake and Taylor in the first set. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Kyle, let's try to finish these guys in two. Yeah. And once we went to three, I was like, I don't like our chances. In three. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just law. And then how'd that like, work out? <laughs> I was like, law of averages says they're probably going to win this one. And we ended up getting smacked in three. But I mean, you're right. It's like that confidence. You're like, damn it. We just slipped that one. <laughs> I always think like I used to always laugh beginning of the year you go to the first tournament and everyone was so confident because mm -hmm. everyone was playing good everyone had worked hard yep. and then by the like after a few tournaments that same team that you barely beat 15-13 it was like you were smashing them and then a week yep. later they were done right yeah. and that just goes to show what you're talking about just that confidence and that uh, that belief goes so far because that's the same two guys together battling you almost taking you down and a few weeks later after a couple tough losses you know, doing it, they're just like, you you put a little cheek in them and they're they're done. Yeah. Right. And I, I think that's what we kind of miss from the old school scoring days because mm -hmm. you hear like the old school guys talking, like old more old school than me, and they're like, dude, it just was, it was just mental. Like you just mm -hmm. wore people down. You're never Once out you of got it. it, it was done. You were never out, and you just wore them down. You wore them down. You wore them down. And I think in our game, what makes it so challenging for us. And especially when you're one of the top players is that you're, you can't like that game goes fast. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, like you win a set, you just set and all of a sudden you're in a third set and it really anything can happen. Yeah. So more often than not, the better team does win the third set, but I guarantee you a lot bigger percentage of the time that, that better team won the set to 15 that was old school scoring. Right. It right. was like just really hard to maintain it for a full time. Totally. Yeah. And so, and, and we could like, the one example I gave is I could beat you in a set you know, say 21 to 10 in the first set. Yeah. Who cares? Next set, you're, you're back. Exactly. Or if I was up 10-1 on you with like, and I was a two seed and you were a set or like I say a 12 seed. Yeah. I mean, come on, man. Like I'm up 10-1 on you. Like this game's done. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? And so I think that that's changed a little bit of the, of it. And it just, we lose a little bit of that. I think some of that toughness, I think some of that like character on the beach, some of the attitude on the beach, mm -hmm. you don't have yeah. as much because you don't, go into that all the time yeah like because it just happens so fast so you get kind of upsets that i don't know just kind of happen and yeah you know everyone's training now so everyone's good and everyone thinks they can win i don't know it's just That's a different vibe and i think it's just not quite it's a little bit of that toughness that i think gets a little bit lost in this new way of playing. Yeah, that's interesting. I never really thought about it that way. Yeah. I feel like, because a lot of times I feel, I mean, everyone knows Trevor likes to talk a bit and like yeah. we got to kind of get him going in, in that way. It's good for him. Yeah. He wants people to talk back and bring that energy. And I think I, I'm totally that way too. It, it, it can light me up. So we're kind of working with trying to figure out how to, who to talk to, who to bring energy to, when to bring energy yeah. to ourselves versus the other team. And I mean, I guess the way that you said, yeah, like wear people down. Like if someone is siding out early, it's like you dare them to 
can you keep doing it? And then you say a little something. And then yeah. you, you know, if they're the right person. And it's like this mental warfare that you're doing the whole match. But I, back in the day, I could see it. Like, everyone was doing it. And it was, like, personal, oh, yeah. like, talking talking trash is, like, kind of frowned upon these days, right? Like, it, like people, we, we've, like, run our mouths even the littlest amount on World Tour. And you see the fans... Oh. Coming in like, oh come on guys! Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. this is a game. Made high five between the yeah. like, across the net, and we're like, suck it! Yeah. Like, get the fuck out of <laughs> here! Love that. Yeah, because you're just trying to win. Like, you're trying to do everything in your power, and if you're not using that kind of mental warfare, or, like, guy's tired, his legs are burning, and you like stare him down and short serve him every ball, kind yeah. of thing. Well, you're like, how much did you work out, dude? Yeah. You remember that workout you missed? You're going to pay for it right mm-hmm. now. Like, make the, them think. The Rosie Raiders finally just like, like, Rosie would scream at them, stop talking to Casey. <laughs> like, you're making them better, right, you know? Sure, yeah. like, or like, stop it. Like, like, put him to sleep. Don't get him going. Casey's and, definitely one of those guys that'll yeah. grind it out and be better if you. Yeah, he talk just, well, to he's going to just be so on his game to, yeah. to be on it. I mean, mm-hmm. we have, there's a guy in Poland. Um, this is Casey Jennings. Jennings, Jennings yeah, yeah, Casey Jennings. There's a guy in Poland right now that plays indoor. I'm blanking on his name. He's a good little player, small, scrappy. And it's like rule one is like when we're playing Poland, just don't talk to him. Yeah. Like you want to talk trash, you can talk trash, but not to him. Right. Because once it goes, he's like a whole different beast. He's like talking at every point. He gets the whole team going. Yeah. That's like, so I'm sure that's what people are saying about Trevor, right? Just like let him talk. Don't get back because, you know, you don't, you don't want to Maybe. Maybe, yeah. Uh, Alisson's kind of like that. Yeah. Like he wants, he wants something to happen like he'll almost create it you know Mm -hmm. uh we were playing them so when we were in our final match of olympic qualification i think we had to jake and casey had to get like a ninth and we had to get like a top three or something like to stay in it uh in that tournament it was like the second or third tournament to the end of olympic qualification but we had allison and bruno like drew the best team in the world at ninth i think and um, we're going all on. Sean Scott was in the stands, and he threw out a, a Hawaiian style chihu. He's like chihu, let's go! <laughs> Just like for me, whatever to get me hyped up. And uh, it was after I like blocked one of them or something like that. And Allison got so pissed. Next point that he scored, he turned around to Sean Scott. He's like. <laughs> and he was just fired up the rest of the time. I was like, fuck, this guy. Like, <laughs> now he's like, he just created. I mean, Willie it's Mammoth. not like it meant anything really, but yeah, yeah he, he just took it as something personal. And he, I think he knew that he could use it to fuel himself. But you watch the World Champs match when they won World Championships, and he's like going like this. The mm-hmm. crowd in Rio, he knows he yeah. has the crowd on his side. Like, yeah. The more pressure, the better. Yeah. And he's trying to conduct the crowd so that everything's happening on his watch, right? Yeah. Like, we're going to serve when I say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go dust the line off, I'm going to do this. You could just tell he was commanding the match at that point. And part of that mental warfare is, like, not letting people get to that point. Like, yeah. <laughs> if, is it possible to not let Alison get to that point where he feels like he's running everything, you know? Yeah. Whether it's, like, he does something to to slow the game down and then you do something to speed it up or, yeah. or like I don't know but I feel like that used to happen a lot more probably yeah back there's in a lot more day. just yeah exactly we have the wiping refs the sunglasses and we have the refs like riding us nowadays though like you can't even go like I've, I've walked slow back to the line I just walk slow in general yeah. and they're they're blowing their whistle at me I'm like you're, I didn't even do anything to delay here I just walk slow yeah and you're blowing the whistle at me like basically I mean you're getting in my head like you're making me like think about you right yeah. now and fucking pissing me off yeah. yeah it's funny how different the AVP refs are and the world tour refs like the AVP refs like they want to just beat your friends out there They're that like, can be a problem too <laughs> <laughs> and the world <laughs> or tour or a good ref, thing like yeah, I, yeah the, yeah, I, I learned early on that the more you're a veteran the, the better it is on the AVP yeah. Yeah. with the refs yeah but I got called on a double in um, Doha and I was asking the ref I was like what was it that was a double? Like, was my left hand high? Like, did it come in bad? Did it come out bad? And he goes, go back. Oh, he won't even talk to me? No, he didn't even talk to me. Not possible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not possible. Are you kidding me? And I was just like, what was the possible. call? And he was just like, 
And then he blew the whistle. Yeah. I'm like, I, I don't know what to. Yeah, they won't even talk to you now. Yeah. They won't I mean, even that's, like, it was like that. We did, they did like an eight second rule in between points. Yeah. And it, like, it's amazing, like your wind, because you're never really recovering, yeah. especially if it's a long rally mm-hmm. and it's like eight seconds. You're like, dude. You're like jogging back. And they kind of like eased up on it, but the first turn, I think you it's were just 12 dying. now, right? I might have been 12. What is we it? actually looked up this rule. It's eight seconds after they blow the whistle. That's what it's supposed so to be. So they might right? give you. So once you, the person gives you the ball and you have eight seconds from the time you have the ball because then they'll yeah, but the it's different. Get it. There's a time limit from when the ball goes dead to when they they blow the whistle. Right, but they can't blow you it. To serve. They can't blow it until you physically have a ball in your hand. Right, right. And right. so I'll like delay time by don't like get it. Yeah, not taking the ball. I'll like go to one side of the net and be like, no, 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 and walk to the other one. Yeah. and take that that ball from the volunteer. You gotta figure out ways to catch your breath in your blocker. Well, you know what you do if your partner <laughs> if your partner needs a breath, you uh, you just go back to serve when it's not your turn. The Jake Gim special. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's not mine? Oh, okay. And Jake will make Taylor serve twenty one times in a row to catch his breath. <laughs> we do that all the time, but it's usually on accident. Yeah. I can never remember who <laughs> serve it is. Oh. Ferbs, if if you had to go back or if you got to go back and tell your younger self, like in the beginning of that quad, the what, London quad, yeah. what advice would you give your younger self in the beginning of that quad? Well, I think I'd go back just to the beginning mm-hmm. and just, uh, you know, I think it, it would be the same lessons I'm still learning now, but patience, mm. you know, and, and just keep grinding. I think Casey and I, we, we came on the tour, we were like in four finals like that. And it was like 22-20, 22-20, we lost two of them, you know? And, but we wanted more, and it was like more what we weren't doing right, mm. right? I was new, Casey was more experienced, but you know, people didn't think Casey was like this great player yet. Right. So he wanted to prove it, and I was just like, well, I gotta like, I wanna win, and I wanna, and so I think we got, I just got like, instead of learning some lessons, I think I got a little bit like uh, frustrated with them. Mm and wanting more and it was like, dude, you've been playing the beach for two years. Mm-hmm. Like if you just keep your pace, keep it going, you'll get there. So just, I guess maybe a little perspective huh. on that. Um, and I think that, that takes you a long way. That kind of sets you up for, yeah. you know, your ability. Like I have this thing I talked to the girls about and it's like prep, action, and then um, react. Prep, reaction, and react. Mm. And it's like you prep for, and you can do this for like a match, right? Like, how do I prep for the match? Yeah. The action, how you played it. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, how do you react to it? Are you going to learn from it? You're going to be like pissed off? Or are you going to just blow it off like you, a bad ref? Yeah. You know, a bad ref call blew it off. But I think you can also do it within like every single point of the match. You prep yourself for like, what am I doing on this point? You play it out, and then how are you going to react? Are you dwelling on it? Are you learning from it? Are you moving on? Right. And so I think like keeping it simple like that and just believing, you know, kind of this through that process, because when you're, when you're trying to get better and trying mm-hmm. to learn the game, there, there's, there's a lot, right? Yeah. So like, you know, your coach could tell you five different things on every block. It's like, I've come and watched sure. them yeah. play sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like, well, what, what should I tell them? You know, like we're asking, I'm like, dude, like these guys are so good. Yeah. You know, like he's so good. Like it, now it's just a matter of, it's just like a fine tune for you at this yeah. point, but you have a bad match. And if you get caught up in that bad match, it can not, it's not helping you, Yeah. right? Um, I worked with a guy named Benny Arquitas, and, uh, and he's a, like the martial art kickboxer. He was like MMA before MMA in right. the 70s, okay. and, yeah. and I trained with him, and he never lost a title fight. So he would go to Thailand and battle the guy, the Muay Thai guy, mm-hmm. and beat him in Muay Thai. Then he'd go to Japan and beat him in that. Insane guy. And he would always say like, well, I didn't lose yet. Like, or I ran out of time. So when you lost a match, it was just like, you didn't lose, you just uh, ran out of time. Yeah, interesting. Right? We ran out of time, bro. If we score, it kept, kept going. And just kind of keeping that going where it's like, it's always, huh. you're kind of always keeping it right. moving forward instead of like, because well, I'd call him like, I was, I was so shitty today and I did this. And right. Mentally, I was checked out and, you know, he'll be like, well, not yet. You know, mm. like, but once you go that route, you've lost and you're defeated, right? right. So I think it's just kind of a combo of that. Um, so I, that's just a cool lesson that I think, um, you know, sure. I, I, I've learned though from coaching now is that like 
you can tell people really good stuff, but you're only ready to learn it at some points in your career. Totally. So I could tell myself something when I was 24 and I might not listen. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Probably were. Maybe people totally. were telling me that. You know, I yeah. don't know. Like, I don't remember, but I heard it when this person said it. Yeah. And I heard it. And what Benny would always say, and I think this is really resonates with me, is like, I can give you like a, a coloring book with the outlines of how to be successful and stuff and things mm -hmm. I do, but you got to color it in and make it your own. Right. Right. And so it's you making it your own before you grasp it. So as me as a coach now, I'm trying to find out ways where I can share things with, with, you know, players I coach that they can hopefully understand. Yeah. But then resonates with them enough where they want it. They want to color it in. Right. They want to do the work. Right. And I think that's the challenge because as you get older, you know, a lot of the answers. It's not, Right. But me telling you an answer doesn't help you if you're not willing to do that work. It's crazy. Right. So I think that's kind of the, the job that I work at all the time as being a coach is how I can, you know, give people enough so they know that we know what we're talking about because they forget quickly that you do know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, did you play? Like, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then, uh, and then it goes that route. So anyways, just, um, that's funny that I was, like, maybe I did hear it when I was that age. Yeah. I didn't listen. No, I'm like right in that right now. And I feel like I'm, you know, let's say halfway through the career where I know what you're saying. Like I've been told so many things, but I, I'm rehearing it now and it's like sticking more, you know? Yeah. And even last night, like I'm just thinking about how hard it is to be a coach. Cause like, I mean, I'm trying to, Olympics kind of, this whole pressure makes you a little more anxious yeah. for everything to be perfect and whatnot. And I'm trying to, be patient and not try to make everyone around me be perfect because that's just not fun to be around you know yeah. um but like i do get frustrated with jose and like like that's not what i want to hear right now like you're telling me too many things i'm trying to focus on this and you're telling me that and blah blah blah. but then last night we had we had like a barbecue and and we were just kind of talking at, about volley at, at the end of the night and i was like just listening to his stories and like how passionate he is and how much he actually knows oh, and yeah. like fuck <laughs> I forget like how valuable the stuff he's saying is and like if I'm if I hear it at the wrong time I'm just like no that's not what I want to hear yeah but like at the same time last night I'm like damn it try like you need to fucking check yourself more often like listen dude like this guy is fully bought in like only wants you to succeed and he's been there and you have your ideas of stuff that has worked and you're not wrong either but like don't let that value go to waste yeah. and it's but it's so hard it's so hard because you're like you're you're right too there's a reason you're the one on the court there's a reason you have that confidence right. and that confidence is pretty much what it's what got you there yeah yeah i think but, like my advice on that is you just like it's video at that point right because you have your feeling of what it is and you have to believe it right you know i mean you can't do something he wants you to do if your conviction is not there on those mm. moves so you gotta you gotta find a way to get that video broken down and say okay like that works mm. or like i know my way doesn't make sense to you but this works you know and so i always admired i wasn't like so practical like that yeah pra you know but i think that's really i mean when it comes down to it i mean it's so funny you go to europe and you lose a match in Europe when you're playing indoors. And so I'm all with Europeans. Uh, cigarettes, yeah. beer, not much talk. Yeah. After the match in the US, you lose. And it's like four hour conversation. And it's really like, well, if we would have served two more balls in, we won. Right. right. You know what I mean? We missed 20 serves. It's like, but we find <laughs> yeah. 30 reasons to come up with, right? Yeah. And then you watch the video and you're like, oh man, like I played, like we didn't play that bad. And yeah. you were like screaming at your team afterwards, like you played the worst game ever. <laughs> right. So, I think like, you know, the more video you can get where it's like you, cause that's visual perspective. Well, I mean, yeah. Most of us are visual learners and you're right. like, all right, you're right. Like that mm -hmm. visually is what that I need. I want to work on that. But then you need to have the detail to stay on that and work on it. And that's what used to frustrate me was I would get this feedback from like Casey or Nick and everyone told how to block and how to do this. And then like three weeks ago by and then he'd be like why are you doing that and it's like well like we i'm never... trying to change a habit like we're not setting up drills to change this yeah. like but it is i mean but at the end it's on me like i should have been in those moments working on that stuff but at the same time it's like oh, we got to set up these this drill so like exactly, you said it's yeah. a it's a balancing act but i think you if you know if you're trusting if you really think there is a way of doing it then you find video and you find evidence yeah 
of it and how that works and then yeah. you explain it so you guys can move forward or you set something up, okay, let's set up, how am I gonna get better at this? And more importantly, is this gonna be the difference? Are we gonna spend time on this? Because right now we're getting ready to go to the Olympics. Right. So I'm totally. cool. If we think this is worth a point, let's spend time on it, break it down. We'll take 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever we need to practice. Yeah. If not, like let's go to something that's gonna make us a point better. Yeah. Let's yeah. spend 10 more minutes serving. Let's spend 10 more minutes pulling, whatever it is that you think is gonna be like the difference. Yeah. Because right now it's not about getting better at everything for you guys. It's about getting better at like something that's gonna make like right. a tangible difference. If there is. I mean, even that's hard to find, right? Yeah. It's so just like kind of work at it. It's just like timing it, being good at the right time and yeah. finding that flow is really like what I'm trying to like let go of more of the technical and all that and just be like, okay, now I gotta connect with Trevor. Yeah. Like, yeah. You gotta find that. Yeah, flow at the and that's right kind time. of a hard thing for you guys to do just because all you've been doing for a year and a half is technical. I mean, yeah. you have the three tournaments for the Champions Cup, but you haven't been able to get into a competition rhythm yeah. where you're just like, you know what, screw all the technical stuff we've been learning. You just like, it's got to be automatic at some point where you just turn yeah. off and compete. Yeah, I know. Like even last night, uh, Jose was saying that the Olympics isn't in in uh august july or, or august yeah. the olympics is every day at practice yeah like and that's so true like when you're doing these qualifications it's like that match i played in vegas remember 2017 the end of Chris, when was that against chris Silnikov right. and just doing after and uh, fall i had 2018 a, maybe fall 20 i had the trickle ace to win the match and it bounced twice so like he scooped it somehow and then fell backwards and hit it and it trickled back on us yeah for us to win that match point. And then we ended up losing the bronze medal match. But like, those were Olympic points, you know? Like, yeah. And that was like three years ago. It yeah. feels like. That was, I think, the second um, but Olympic that's, qualification event. That swing, it was. That swing was just as important as the last one. Right. And that's the crazy thing if you think about it. So it yeah. kind of brought me back to present. Like, yeah. Like, we have to figure out a way to bring that pressure in practice right now. Like, but... It's so hard because we haven't played in so long. Right. And then we didn't get to play in Doha. And, but yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's got to be like, I think that the area where another area where I think we could do, I could have done better is you got to make that fun. Mm. Like, you got to make those challenges and like look at it like, fuck yeah, dude. Like, yeah. we can get better at this. That. Not like, wow, we suck at this. We're not good <laughs> at this because that's frankly where we went more often with it right yeah. but it was like wow like we could do this like this could be fun yeah so if you can make it like fun and getting on that skill and then there's a grind to it right always a grind to For it sure. but there's if you can get that i think that you know a little bit of fun out of those changes it, it, it changes that it gets you learning a little bit more yeah. than you just repping on a drill you know yeah i feel like we're at that point right now it's like yeah, I'm bummed you guys didn't get to play in Doha. I'm I'm a little upset with USA Volleyball over that one. Yeah, it just, it just no sort of, <laughs> I just you know I just feel like three teams have earned a spot. Whether one's in the qualifier and two are in the main draw, and then you qualify for the or you do a country quota for that fourth team. You know, whatever that fourth spot yeah. is, you, that's a country quota. But just because yeah. the team's in the qualifier, especially with you guys, when you're going for the Olympics and you had a hand injury that yeah. kind of led to it, I was like, you know. Because going through the qualifiers enough, you know. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. I don't know. I just that was disappointing to. to well, have we would have been main draw too. We had enough teams dropped out. Teams dropped out, so we were main draw. But but Sean had pulled us out already. But we've talked about that enough already. <laughs> okay, yeah, we'll move on. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's. But yeah, it's you guys crazy. Play. I like how you guys are doing those. Like, aren't you guys doing those little tournaments down there? Yeah, like, there's one. That's good. Yeah, right. just trying are you to simulate one something. In two weeks? Yeah, I think so. Nice. Yeah, you yeah. gotta play, man. Yeah, like, we gotta, they gotta compete. We, we need to compete, exactly. Yeah. But we're putting, it's funny because we're putting a lot on practices right now. Not like literally, but we're, that tension is there, you know? Yeah. And it's something that I keep hearing, you're the third or fourth person whose opinion I respect that I've heard say, you gotta have fun with it. Like Rosie's out there, you guys gotta get back to having fun. Yeah, it's easier Mr. Crab. Now. I know, I'm like, totally, like, wow. Like, but it's just, this it's is that an opportunity of a lifetime. Yeah, it's that perspective when you back out from it. And you're but like, then we're that is the fun shit. Like, yeah, exactly. you're in it like this. Yeah. Like, that's a part you remember, <laughs> man. I'm like, you're in it. I tell my kids all the time, I'm like, look, if you go home, we're at practice, and you go home, and you tell your parents, they go, how was practice? And you go, it's okay. 
if you didn't have a good practice, right. but if you go home and go house practice, I mean, we don't, none of us like to talk to our parents about that stuff, but if you went home like, oh my <laughs> God, there was just one ball and I dove for it and I got it up and then he transitioned yeah, and sent yeah. me like, because you're telling a story of something you did in practice because mm -hmm. you were so locked in. Right. Right. And when you're on that, that's not locked in. Yeah. Like, and I always tell people like, when I say have fun, I'm not saying like laugh. Right. Smile after you get blocked. I'm not telling you to smile after you get blocked and have fun. But I'm telling you, like, respect that guy that blocked you. Right. And think about ways, be so focused and so locked in that you're back and going at it and don't beat yourself up and don't go down and put your head down and yeah. do all stuff that's not fun. Yeah. So there's like that, I think focus would be more fun to me than like huh. you and Trevor should start laughing during practice. Right. Like, totally. Totally. You know what I mean? But it's just like respect that focus, respect all the work that it takes to be great. Mm -hmm. And and but enjoy that somehow enjoy that a little yeah bit. you know and if totally. someone can crack a joke and laugh to break it up that's great right right you right. know laugh it in uh jose's accent or something right. you know? yeah. <laughs> there's Whatever a good amount of that yeah but yeah it's so hard to like not get oh. last quad i was like pretty aggro too like we had john like, too sometimes oh, we gotta do this yeah and i mean john's he uh he rides you yeah. for sure but this time I'm trying to be less aggro about it and just kind of let it happen, but also yeah. be like, like you said, focused and trying to find the yin, yin and yang yeah. on this yeah. time around. And it's, it's intense, man. I'm like starting to remember now, like what it was like towards the oh. end. And I'm like, oh yeah, Dude, this, yeah. where you can't sleep. <laughs> yeah, We played in the Czech Republic and I think we got like a, we lost first round, Nick and I did. And we were literally like, this is Olympic year. We, were, we had already gotten, I think we got second in the first event in Brazil. We lost to Phil and Todd in the finals. And I had like gotten food poisoning the night before the final. So it was good. And then we got, I think a fifth in China. We went to Czech Republic and we got, were losing the, I don't even know, remember who we lost to, but we were like literally Nick and I were yelling at each other, but like full screaming at each yeah. other, just so tense. And then we ended up playing this gnarly match against a Brazilian team who lost because it wasn't a pool play, it was just a straight up 32 and okay. we lost. And uh, I look back at that, I'm like, my God, dude, we just didn't let our like, we just came out totally separate and then brawled when we weren't doing what we wanted to do yeah. instead of like, dude, I got your back, got my back, yeah. like, let's get this, what do we need to do? How can we set this up? Yeah. So that when it came, we were ready for it and we just weren't and it just like, here we are, you know, big tournament we get a 25th and it wasn't yeah. a grand slam thank god and and you know but it was an opportunity for us to have a good tournament yeah and we, and we lost it so <sighs> it's brutal it's a lot of pressure <laughs> olympics are a lot of pressure i've yeah. never felt it probably never will but <laughs> just watching you guys but then at the end of the day it's like that's the you'd be that's so you even if you lost it in the most heartbreaking way you'd be so much more bummed for not having that experience oh yeah yeah we learned, I learned a ton in my losses and my wins and just all those experiences. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I said, USA Volleyball wasn't helping us back then. Yeah, so we totally. were rolling 2000 bucks out of pocket to go to a draw, to go to play in a country quota. You know, we played, yeah. we played, we played Dane and Nigs in the final of the San Diego event in 2003, like our first tournament, um, one of our first tournaments and we lost. They had just won Greece. So they were a new team too. No one yeah. knew who Jeff Nygaard was. Dane and Jeff go out there. They win Greece. They come back to, to San Diego. They beat us in the finals. Um, we go over and play them in the country quota in Switzerland. And we beat them <laughs> in the country quota in Switzerland. And there's 90 cameras out. Because not for us, but all for Dane and Nice. Because yeah. here's a team no one knew. And then right. there's one, right? And then we go. And we end up like, you know, with, I don't know. We made, we made the main draw. And we went. But it just like... We did that, we paid for that, like to get yeah, all the other right. shot, to do it. There was no like, you know, that was before the checks came yeah. or whatever. And then it was like, if you made the main draw, if you got it, they'd give you like a little bit of money. And mm -hmm. So it was just like, it was definitely, um, warming up for that match was nerve wracking. And oh, always man. like in Europe, it's always a little cold or yeah. really hot, yeah. you know? And it's yeah. like, everyone's kind of around and no one really wants to say anything. <laughs> it's like, so they're just like, just cheer, please. Like yeah. no one cheers. <laughs> yeah. It's quiet. It's like a golf Cause match. none of the American, so none of the Americans can cheer. Right, so right, right. Yeah. Just like, come on, man. Uh, <laughs> that's what's crazy about our sport in general. It's like, I feel like, I mean, going like truly committing to the grind of beach volleyball has to prepare you for like 
real life more than anything else yeah. that I can think of. Like, I mean, I've never played a match with the stakes that you guys are talking about, but going to China, we were the dead last seed in the qualifier for a three star in China uh, two years ago. And I was like, you know, this is like a $3,000 trip that we're taking. We could lose in 25 minutes. And I was like, the first ball that we play, I, I was like, I just want to survive the first switch. Like, I'll take down 5-2. I, like, couldn't feel my hands. Like, they were so numb. <laughs> and then once you get over that, it's good. But it's like, like you said, nothing will really make you all that nervous after that. <laughs> you're good. Um, how, how has it been, I don't know, kind of entering? Obviously, you're still in the coaching world. But mm -hmm. do you feel like a lot of, I mean, we talk about a lot, like, you're you're basically a travel agent you're you know dealing with your own finances and d dealing with a lot of things you know hiring your trainer your coach like a lot yeah. of things that other professional athletes don't have to deal with yeah do you feel like a lot of those skills have translated over um post-career yeah i remember the first national team trip i went on as a coach or indoors and like we're carrying all the jerseys. We're carrying like the guys literally are packing a bag, but no volleyball stuff except for their shoes. Right. Yeah. We're backing the bars. We, they got the uh, game ready. It's like, <laughs> you know, there's 12 bags that the guys have to kind of carry, mm -hmm. but like that AB are, are amazing trainers packing for yep. the guys. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> like, and the trips and the food's all done. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I was like, yeah, we used to like, it's a little different than it was for us. <laughs> yeah. A little different. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, I think all those, all that responsibility, the lessons. Um, I think just the, I, I remember, I think it was right after 2008 and Casey and I had gotten back together and uh, US, that's when USA was like trying to kind of get in a little bit more of beach volleyball, yeah. like Carrie and some other people were like, dude, you guys give us zero support. Like you yeah. gotta step up, like, or we're gonna start our own, like we're gonna get a beach federation, right? And it was a big deal. And people compared it to like skiing and snowboarding. Eventually there was a snowboarding and a skiing one, uh, right? It's not one. Oh, interesting. And I thought there was some merit in it and we were meeting and then USA Volleyball was like, no, we're going to step up. And they really have, right? Yeah. Like they've really done a great job. Um, but at this point it wasn't the case. And, but they, they, we had this meeting and it was so funny. It was like, they were telling us all the support and what they were going to do for teams and how they're going to help them and get these young teams going and train them and get them going. And I was like, well, that's really cool for the young teams. And that's really good that you're gonna like, you know, you're gonna take someone and teach them what they have to do. But the old system, the great part about it was is that you found out people that really wanted it and they could like do it on their own. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so like, you know, you knew that Casey and I could do it because we did it. Right. You didn't know before if Casey and I were 24 year olds and they were doing it, like you don't know when you're investing time and energy and, and it's just like, maybe you do it, but maybe you're doing it because you're getting that help, but you're just not mentally totally there to do it yeah and so i think that's a, um was kind of like i was like oh is this real i mean it's better but you don't you still want to make people like earn it like you still want to make people go do that because it's yeah. a, it's it's proving it um but i think just our sport in general does that right yeah like i mean i played a broken foot for a year because only way i get paid is if i play so i played on it right Jeez. it was like a stre stress fracture like two days after the season and things snapped Oh. Um, you know, all the injuries you play through, right? F thumbs, fingers, oh, fingers yeah. uh, neuroma in my foot. It's the shoulder. worst. You, you do a finger early in the season. Yeah. You're like, I know that's going to be there the whole year. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. that's not going not away that the other whole athletes season. don't play through pain and listen to football players. Like, right. uh, hockey, I know, like, more, 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 way more than we do. Right. But if they can't go, they get paid. Yeah. If we can't go, we do not get paid. Yeah. yeah. And so I think all that does, it it does, it sets you up and it, and, um, and we fly back and coach until you get the status, until you get the status. Until you get the status. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, um, it makes you, it just, it teaches you just to be prepared. Like it teaches you to take responsibility, which I love. I love yeah. those lessons I learned. Mm -hmm. Like, don't wait for it. You can't, I can't wait for the hope. I can't fuck up on this because no one's taking this over for me. I got to get the right flight. Yeah. I got to do it. And if you don't, you learn a quick lesson. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I feel like it kind of teaches you as well. It teaches you, um, like fail big kind of, yeah. you know, if you, cause if you go half in on this and you're not fully committed to that one mat, you get such a small window to actually make it. Like, yeah. for example, when Hayden and I won our country quota, um, down at the beach down here, and then we earned ourselves three events and, by the end of those three events, we were main draw on team, it, yeah. you know, and awesome. I went from nothing to uh, in the Olympic race all of a sudden. Yeah. 
Um, but that window was so small. And, and I feel like if you're half in, you're like playing it safe, you're just not going to, it's not going to work. Yeah. And that's like a good life lesson too. I'm like, if I'm going to go for something, I'm going big yeah. and I'm going to fail big. Which is kind of how I feel with the Olympics. Like you put every yeah. you put everything into it, and like for no both of us been there where it's like, well, you're not an Olympian. You did all that? No, nope. you don't get that label. You still got five events. Oh well, I'm lucky. I, I got <laughs> another shot. You're shot. still there. <laughs> I got a shot. I think but I'm saying, yeah, the no, last quad. That's what yeah. I was like. Yeah, dude, all these guys are Olympians. And I, then I you get, get out of it, right and you're now. like, it's really not that big of a deal. Like, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, okay, would I have loved to play in the Olympics? Yeah. Yeah. But, like, it's not. It's in the, in the grand scheme of things, yeah, way yeah, better yeah. to go for it. Right. Than yeah. to not and, and go. I think Brian Lewis always had a great saying. If you guys know what Brian Lewis is, but he was a great player. Yeah. He was, like, finishing his career when I was starting, but an Orange County guy where I grew up and, and just always was a good mentor for us and had the, one of the best jump serves of all time. Yeah. But Lewis used to say, you know, you got to play naked. And, you know... And that just, that's just it. You know, you got to yeah. be out there willing to expose yourself to all that. Otherwise, you know, you're in trouble. So, yeah. you know, it's your chance to kind of put all these lessons to work, I right? Know. Like to go see it's if you can cool. do it. It's yeah. pretty cool. I mean, like, because I, I could be sitting here saying, like, I wish I had the, another opportunity to do it. Yeah. But I, I have that now. So, yeah. let's go. Here we go. I mean, Cancun rush it. is, <laughs> you leave in like three-ish weeks, four weeks. Yeah. Three how many how many events are there going to be? Sorry. Um, three events three in events. Cancun. Yep, and then there'll be one in Sochi, Russia. Okay. And then one in Ostrava, Ostrava, Czech Republic. Oh, so five that's, events. That's it. Yeah. Rad. Five events. Three in Cancun. Yeah. And three where are events. you guys going to be in the main draw now, or are you going to have to go in the qualifier? You know? As of now, we're country quota again against Theo and Kamer, which okay. is another. I'm going to make a couple calls. Yeah, I'm kidding. I'm going to make a couple calls. <laughs> you got some Sean's got your guy. Sean's I wish got I, your guy. Sean, hey, old no, partner. I've already had an hour long conversation I'm with sure Sean. We and we didn't get anywhere. <laughs> was, it, uh, was it any? He, he had logical for you after because I know that you barely missed 08 too, right? Uh, yeah, we kind of made a late run, okay. but we weren't really that close. But um, we ended up being like ranked seventh okay. or so, but we weren't really in the running. Was it any consolation to you to win a bronze medal in 2016 after coming so freaking close to making it? 2012. I mean, well, as a coach, yeah, but still, I mean, you were there. Yeah, I mean, was that your it, first Olympics? That was my first Olympics, That's right? I mean. And so that was pretty. It was just special being there. Like opening ceremonies, John, uh, head coach Spraw, let me walk because yeah. um, it's like you only get so many people that can walk. So not every coach gets to walk. Coaches mm. don't get medals, so right. all you guys know that. Wow. Uh, so um, interesting. It's, yeah. So we. Uh, but yeah, it was. It was just being there was yeah. amazing. Um, and I felt like it was a really good time for me because I had just kind of gone through that stuff. So I was able to share a lot of that stuff with the guys and yeah. um, be in that situation and keep everyone. But our group was just, we had a, just a really good group of guys that were focused but kept it fun and that uh, were young, but we had enough veteran leadership. It was just yeah. a really good mix of everything. And guys, that they got naked on that court, man. They played hard. We had some big points. We got down. We lost our first match to Canada, which was supposed yeah, to be one of the major that. wins. We lost to Italy in pool play. We ended up losing to later in the semifinals. So we were 0-2 in the Olympics with Brazil and France uh, still to go in our pool. So yeah. we were looking at not getting out of pool play. Right. And uh, John stayed. I mean, I'm thinking about that. Like, I mean, I was calm and I'm the assistant coach. You yeah. Know? Uh, he's the head coach. And he stayed calm. We just uh, stayed focused. And the guys responded like no other. We, our win versus France and our win versus Brazil are some of the best volleyball I've ever seen. Yeah. Like, I mean, right there, like, holy shit. Like, that, these guys are balling. Yeah. Nothing yeah. hit the ground. We have guys my height that are so fast and explosive, covering the yeah. net. Just, it was really, Mike was setting so well. It was really fun to watch. Yeah. So, yeah, being a part of that, being in that locker room, that definitely gives you that sense of, like, you know, like, we were all in it, coaches, everyone's super focused. So it was fun. And I cannot wait. I cannot wait to get back to that again because yeah, that's there's sure. nothing there's nothing like that. Yeah, and you guys are qualified for Tokyo. Right? Yeah, we're to, yeah, yeah yeah it's all qualified. Um, so yeah, now it's just a matter of of getting ready. And um, I think the nice thing too on the indoor side is coaches have a little more impact. Yeah. Than on the beach side, I mean we're calling like I'm calling commit blocks. We're going to go in the middle. What we're scheming on, and yeah. everyone's on those those pay off. Yeah. And it's still I mean obviously it's guys that are winning and not doing anything. 
but it does give you a little bit more action and say in the game where you're in yeah. it where I feel like it's got to be frustrating as a beach coach to just have not well, having like game like, day you have to you're like thinking about what you put in your body because you want your brain to be good yeah, but right. like a beach coach you're like I'm going to be in the stands yeah, so I'm be in the time stands. for me to get my donut <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's true but that's just how I'm oh, it's so weird to me to not have any control coaches. that's got to be tough you know because oh the amount of time that like all your, your Dude, coaches stress so hard because I, I had Evie yeah. and Jose like <laughs> Evie stress is so oh, hard <laughs> He's was just a stress yeah. ball. I think it's so weird that beach coaches aren't allowed in the boxes. Like, what other sport is your coach not allowed to, uh, tennis. to be with your players? Tennis. Okay. Yeah, tennis. That's what You're a tennis guy, right? No. Like okay. No. I mean, I like no, tennis, okay. yeah. I like tennis, but I, I just don't. Uh, I think that's what it's, it's, it's. I find it so strange yeah. that that's the case. I don't really get the purpose. I, I thought early on it was because some countries didn't have, like, coaching, and it would be too much of an advantage for one team or another but i, I, I mean, don't, we're past I don't know what point. the logic is at this point i don't know what the logic of the country quota is to be honest at this point because it it's done if its there's job one now. or two like, teams added in it's not gonna ruin the integrity of it being a international event anymore right oh, yeah. but it is gonna completely screw over those two teams it right, be right. completely unfair to those teams who aren't fighting against the rest of the world they're fighting against their own country yeah. Well, the what has to go for it to change is you have to somehow prove that you are now you are taking my ability to compete away, like, like from a legal standpoint. From a legal standpoint, right? That's like you're, you're taking valid. my ability to compete. Like I want to go be a professional. I mean, that's kind of, you know, when. Why does it matter what country I'm from? Yeah. Like, I'm. We're two individuals who are a team trying to compete. Yeah. And, and if we're honest. ranked. 20th in the world, that's what we are. If we're ranked 40th in the world, that's what we are. If we're ranked 5th in the world, that's what we are. Right. Bottom line, right? right. Yeah. So, but I don't... Oh, I like that approach. There must be... There must be... <laughs> there must not... That must not be the case. I feel like it'd be gone, but maybe it's just us in Brazil are the only ones that really deal with it, right? Yeah. Maybe once in a while, there's a, a local event where more guys go to, but... No, yeah. Uh, we're the only ones. Germany, I think. Yeah. A little bit. And I think Canada is slowly getting close to... Yeah. Point. I bet. But, I well, I know their guys have like nine Canadian teams signed up for Cancun, so they might actually have. Oh them. yeah, but but they I think don't their have. Women are they don't have multiple enough. teams that are main draw teams, right? Right. Their women are going to so, get yeah. deep enough, I think, just with how many young ones are yeah. playing so good in college, and that are going to be coming up and playing at that level soon. So, but I think it, because the country code was established, so every tournament wasn't ten Brazilians versus ten Americans, but yep. we're past that point now. I think yeah. it's done its job to make parity spread across the sport. And now we're well, it, it it may get there like over time, but yeah. in the end, like that's the the bug's been spread, right? Like yeah. Sinjin got beach volleyball spread around the totally. world, yeah. which is awesome. Like really, it, it is. But now it's like we make people better by doing that, right? You yeah. get better by having to be better to right. get right. there. So I <laughs> yeah. think it's. I think it's. I, I think it is time, and I mean, maybe if it got to the point where it happened and it just got taken over. Then maybe you, right? You know, maybe you have to do it again. But I think they could at least try to get rid of it for a while. Also, from an entertainment standpoint, like people don't want to watch a bunch of the top teams from the top countries play each other. They want to see the best teams in the world go at it. Yeah, I think. Yeah, and if the fifth American team is better than the number one from Israel or whatever, if then so be it. if let's say Israel gets a team that goes free to the main draw, not even the Israel fans are excited about it because they know they got a free <laughs> pass to the main draw. Right. But if they earned it, if they know how hard it is to get there, and this team got there, they got all the way to the main draw, then it's like everyone's going to back them and want to watch them. Yeah. It's not exactly how it works. Like, yeah. <laughs> if they're in the main draw, they they probably did earn it, you know, unless it was like the one or two country quota teams. Yeah. But I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, but it's <laughs> exciting it that you've got stuff to Beach play again poems. soon. You've got stuff to coach again. Yeah. Yep. So what's your schedule looking like? So you're coaching Long Beach for another what couple months before you're kind of leaving for Italy and then it's a national team from there on out. Yeah. Um, so I'll go probably till the beginning of May with the with the girls, and then they get dead week final, so we they can't do anything during okay. that time. And our six weeks will be up with them in the spring, um, and then I'll probably start coaching. The guys, right when Long Beach is done, guys will start coming back. And then, yeah, I'll be doing, for a little bit, I'll do some rock star at night and okay. national team during the day. And then when I'm in the bubble, obviously I can just lock in, which is nice for me. 
Yeah. Because I have a lot of stuff going on, so it's nice I can go and just like right now I'm focused just on Long Beach and yeah. it's it's nice. Yeah. That's so, awesome. Yeah. Ferbs, thanks for coming yeah, on. Man. Thanks Heck for having yeah. me. Glad to have you here. Stoked. Yeah. Blast. Yeah, thanks for having me and good good to catch up with you guys. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Hopefully right. you two will see each other in Tokyo. Yes. Oh, that'll Let's be epic. It. Let's go, Ferbs. <laughs> see you there. Thanks for uh, right. biking by and giving us some advice as well. Oh, we, yeah. we appreciate it. For sure. <laughs> of course. Of course. All right. Shoots, guys. Shoots.